And welcome back to all guests, our listening audience. Listen, I'm going to rephrase that because y'all not guests. Y'all the listening audience of the lift. Y'all a fam. So <laughs> welcome back to all fam and folk who didn't change the dial, who stayed with us and those who are watching on social media platforms. Today, we're kind of focusing in the context of Women's History Month on this idea that we each get a chance to leave our history, to make an impact, to make an imprint. And if you were here in the earlier segment of today's episode, um, you heard us talk a bit about the two guests that we have here. And this common thread that I heard was the sense of surviving, of overcoming. And then both of them in some ways have birth. I believe just you, a time for her, and even your credit consulting repair or something like that, what you <laughs> said. Uh, you're going to say it again. It makes me feel like you didn't overcome some stuff in that area. Yes. And then, Danny, even when you spoke, you're, you're either, there was like a sobering kind of atmosphere that came over you as you began to talk about wellness for women. And so yes. I'm believing that that impact that you're leaving on the world is birth out of some personal experience. So we're going to flip it for a minute. We're going to come to you first, Cassie. So I'm going to give you a moment to gather your thoughts. Um, but we're going to talk a bit about that, this idea that what we birthed out into the world is sometimes the answer to what we were looking for. Mm -hmm. And while they're gathering their thoughts, I'm going to share a bit from that. I'm going to say that to, to our listening audience because so many people approach me like about, well, how do I find my purpose and and how do I figure out what I'm supposed to do and on and on and on. And it's like, honey, you know, the Lord have a way of keeping us humble because I tell the people if I could sing, I would, you know, I would have been a star. I would have been, he know I would have been doing too much. And so many of us do that. We are looking for the fancy. We are looking for the glamorous. We are looking for the, I don't know, the beautiful stuff to tell. And so many times where your imprint is, where your legacy is, where your your ministry is or whatever vernacular you use, it's really located in the stuff you survived and came out of, the stuff yeah. that's not so pretty that you may not want to talk about. And so you spend a lifetime searching for what was in you all along. And mm -hmm. so with that, I'm just going to uh, share the guests and let them tell a little bit about the story behind what they've birthed. And hopefully that encourages somebody else to not hide your true story, to actually use your story, to use that problem that you came out of as a platform to get to your next. So we're going to go with you first, Cassie, and you can share again your business name, but deeper than the business, what's the why? How'd you get there? Absolutely. So my business name is New Credit, New You, LLC, and the business was founded in 2013. Um, after I purchased my first home in 2012 as a single mother and a single woman. Right. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I went through the process myself of credit repair. Um, I tried to purchase a home um, after li living in a rental property for um, over two years. I tried to purchase a home and found out my credit was jacked up. <laughs> you mean all the way jacked up the people said no? I couldn't buy a piece of bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> it's the found out like you were shot. <laughs> and I didn't know I had yeah. to <laughs> like that. I had right. no idea um, yeah. of anything about credit, but what I did know is that I wasn't investing into anyone else's property. Um, so I moved, um, after I found that information out, I moved into a one bedroom apartment. I moved mm. out that home, um, my son and I, and mm. I hired all these credit companies who told me that they can do these different things for me. Um, so I signed a six month lease. After that six month lease, credit was still couldn't buy nothing mm -hmm. still couldn't buy that bubble gum <laughs> <laughs> right. um, and so after that um, I, I, my mind was still made up I was determined I was not giving up and so I called one of my aunts and she had a room for me mm -hmm. that I can come live with her mm -hmm. packed up that one bedroom apartment yeah. wow. and went to a one room um, wow. at my aunt's house and so yeah. I stayed there um, I had four months because she didn't have it available for a while and so to make a long story short after being told these stories about what these companies could do for me and they didn't do it, mm. um, I, ha I knew that I was on a time strain and I had to get, um, do what I had to do. And yeah. so within that time, I took the information that was given to me. Wow. I did my own research yeah. and I started to work on my own credit. Yeah. Um, with Let me, let's, oh, let's, let's, ahead. let's look like just, cause you said so much, cause you said it's credit repair. And you called it new credit, credit new you, new credit, yeah. new you. And it's the new you part that resonates even in your story, because I'm sure we can hear like this pathway of saying, I want this bad enough, right, mm -hmm. to transition from a home, to transition to an apartment, to transition to a one bedroom, mm -hmm. me and my son, I'm going to do what I have to do to get to a new me. And I think 
beyond the company, which is amazing, that was birthed yes. out of it. It was a mindset that something has to change, and I'm willing to pay the price to get to the change. And so for whoever's listening today, again, like this thing is birthed out of you determining that whatever the stigma was about you being a single mom and you can't have and that's not for you, you were already in a space of saying, yes. nah, I'm going to have it. Yes. Whatever it, ca whatever, whatever it takes, right? Yes. Yeah, you can just share more, Cassie. That's great. And I absolutely did that, whatever it took. And um, at the end, when I finished repair, my I barely made it to mm -hmm. a 620, which is what I needed to qualify for the home. And I called the lender who stood by my side the mm -hmm. entire process. And he said, I've never seen this happen before you are a miracle customer. Mm -hmm. At that moment, I knew that there was a purpose in what I went through. Yeah. And then I took that and birthed the company to start helping others. And not only did I take it there, beyond New Credit New You, but I'm also a realtor now. And Yay. I'm also helping not only them fix their credit, but also purchase the home as well now. So I bridged the gap. Wow, so you've created a whole like, a portal of services from that story, yeah. from that space. Absolutely. Come on into the combo, D Danny. What you got? Thank you, Cassie. Yeah, You're I love that. Um, Thank you. Man, similarly, uh, it started with me as well. Um, in 2019, I found myself in a space of reaching like some goals that we mm -hmm. had. We had opened a, a second studio. Um, I was begin to launch. I went full time, full entrepreneurship then. Yeah. Uh, so uh, externally, it really appeared that I was really doing was some doing great it. things. Yeah. yeah, I hear your word externally. Yeah. Externally, yes. um, because internally I was crumbling. Yes. And one of the things that I ran into was when I did a lot of mental health research. This was pre-COVID. So yes. after COVID, we have a lot more research. Right. But then Pre, we didn't no. have a lot of that. No. And when I would research women that struggled with anxiety, um, the faces and the pictures and the depictions were women who were stuck. Yes. And so they weren't necessarily, they were saying that it was crippling for them and that they yes. couldn't do things. And so for me, I was uh, stuck in a reality of being a woman whose mental health was struggling, but it didn't look like yeah. anyone that I saw. Yes. And so while people um, heard what I was saying yes. when asking for help, because I looked okay, yes. they overlooked me. Yes. And so they would say, oh, it's, you just, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, you're just tired. Yeah, you just tired. You just got to rest. You're right. just doing right. too much. Or, right. or you need to be grateful yes. for what's yes. happening yes. in your life. Yes. And so while all of these external rah-rahs are happening and congratulations, yes. I am like melting. I'm having panic attacks. Yes. Um, my family is watching me literally have complete panic attacks melt down. Yes. And mm -hmm. I don't know what to say because I'm also a woman of faith. Yes. And yes. so what do you do when the you're praying? intersection. Yes. Right. When you're praying, when you're a believer, when you're yes. doing all of these things and you're still you're still showing up to work. Yes. You're functioning. And, yes. you know, one of the things that anxiety does for me, I can still perform can well under pressure, yes. like perform yes. well, but well until at what cost? Right. And I think it's interesting, Danny, because there's actually lingo in the therapeutic world that calls it high functioning exhaustion. Yeah. Where so many of us are very accustomed to having to pack the weight of the world and yes. still do what we have to do in our own personal um, scenarios, whether it's it's being sick and still going, yes. having headaches, migraines still yes. going, taking mm -hmm. care of aging parents and still going. I don't know, being the go-to person for everybody yes. in your world and still going. It's yes. very common in our culture yes. to be that. I know that uh, we're going to come back and, and try to give some hope in that as it relates to resolutions because that whole intersection of faith, yeah. faith and faking, yeah. <laughs> and and mm. learning how to say every time they ask you how you're doing, blessed and highly favored yes. while falling apart, yeah. right? Like it's you can be all of it. So we're going to come right back and talk about that. But for anybody who's listening, again, if you have to take a break, if you're jumping out of your car, if you're having to cut it off, at least in this segment, we hope that you've gotten just that nugget yeah. alone that there is no perfect imagery of what suffering and anxiety and overcoming looks like, that many of us are out here responsibly so carrying a certain image, but you are not alone if you have been struggling, if you have felt the weight of anxiety, depression, yeah. whatever it looks like, you're not alone, that that is a very real thing for women. And in Women's History Month, we wanna give a nod to it. So we're gonna um, come right back in just a moment. Don't switch your dials and we'll see you soon on mm -hmm. The Lift. <laughs> Thank y'all for being here.